Tonight, breaking news as we come on the air, the tornado threat right now and the severe storm threat worsens over the next 24 hours, several states. And tonight, the Arizona Supreme Court upholding that state's 160 year old abortion ban, one of the strictest bans in the nation. The reaction coming in at this hour, the justices in Arizona upholding that law from 1864. The law made before Arizona was even a state, before women had the right to vote. Tonight, Arizona is a key battleground, as you know, this November in the presidential race. So what does it mean in the race for president? Also tonight, for the first time, the mother and father of a school shooter sentenced to up to 15 years in prison each for their son's deadly school shooting. The apology from the father in court, but what the families of the victims then told both of those parents in the courtroom. The severe storm threat moving across several states tonight, tornado watches, the flooding threat, damaging winds gusting up to 75 miles per hour. The system then making its way toward the East Coast and right up into the Northeast. Rob Marciano timing it out. Federal agents tonight preventing what they say was a planned terror attack on multiple churches. The FBI arresting an 18 year old suspect tonight. What authorities say he was planning. Pierre Thomas with late reporting. The horrific video tonight, the newly released police body camera video of a deadly police shooting in Chicago. Graphic images showing a driver pulled over for a seatbelt violation, opening fire, wounding an officer, police firing back. 96 shots in 41 seconds. Tonight, Donald Trump's last minute appeal to delay his criminal trial in New York that starts on Monday, denied tonight by an appeals court judge. So what does this mean? Will the hush money trial begin on Monday? The fires raging outside New York City tonight. The images coming in right now. These fires are near Newark Airport. And what authorities are now saying, a helicopter crashing into the water in Rhode Island, the urgent rescue effort before the chopper went down. Does Walmart owe you money? Authorities say time is running out for those who are eligible. And so many of you sent us messages after watching the solar eclipse right along with us. Tonight, with help from you, the most stunning images before we wait another 20 years. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to be back from our coverage of the solar eclipse, and we really appreciate you joining us for our special coverage. But we do begin tonight here with several developing headlines. This threat of severe storms, tornadoes, flooding across several states. It gets much worse over the next 24 hours, eventually right up into the Northeast. But we begin with the shockwaves in Arizona tonight after that state's Supreme Court has now upheld an abortion law dating back to 1864, criminalizing all abortions except those to save the mother's life. In their decision, the Arizona justices referred repeatedly to the U.S. Supreme Court ruling overturning Roe versus Wade. Their decision on hold for 14 days pending a lower court review. Arizona Governor Katie Hobbs, a Democrat, saying the ruling creates more chaos for women and doctors in her state. A doctor who performs an abortion could get up to five years in prison. She says voters will have their say in November. Arizona, of course, is a key battleground in the race for president this November. And the question already, how could this decision now affect the presidential race. ABC's Rachel Scott leading us off tonight. Tonight, Arizona's highest court upholding a 160 year old abortion ban, one of the strictest in the country. A law written in 1864, before Arizona was even a state and before women had the right to vote. It outlaws nearly all abortions, the only exception to protect the life of the mother. Tonight, outrage from Arizona's Democratic Governor Katie Hobbs. And the near total Civil War era ban that continues to hang over our heads only serves to create more chaos for women and doctors in our state. Under the law, doctors who perform abortions could face up to five years in prison. Frustration from Arizona lawmaker Eva Birch, who recently had an abortion after her pregnancy failed. A couple weeks ago, I had an abortion, a safe, legal abortion here in Arizona for a pregnancy that I very much wanted. Somebody took care of me. Somebody gave me a procedure so that I wouldn't have to experience another miscarriage, the pain, the mess, the discomfort. And now we're talking about whether or not we should put that doctor in jail. In today's ruling, the Arizona court referring 22 times to the U.S. Supreme Court's decision overturning Roe v. Wade. Donald Trump has boasted of appointing three of the six justices who overturned Roe. 
Yesterday, he said states should make their own laws when it comes to abortion. The states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both, and whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. President Biden says that means that Trump supports state bans like the one in Arizona, which Biden today called extreme, dangerous and cruel. Biden and Trump both know that abortion rights has won in all six states where it has been on the ballot, including in conservative states like Kansas, Kentucky and Ohio. This November, voters could decide in 14 states, and one of them is Arizona, a key presidential battleground. Tonight, the governor with this message. To the people across Arizona who are concerned about the future of abortion rights in our state, you can make your concerns known at the ballot box, and I encourage you to do so. So this is really shaping up to be uh, an issue that could affect the presidential race in November. Rachel Scott back with us tonight covering the race for president. And of course, not just in Arizona, but how many presidential battlegrounds, these are the key states in the Electoral College that help decide the presidential race, will have voters not only deciding in the race for president, but weighing in on the issue of abortion rights. David, we could see this issue on the ballot in several battleground states, including Pennsylvania, Arizona and Nevada. We know that voters in Florida will have the final say on this issue, and that does raise real questions about whether it puts a state like Florida in play for Democrats. We know President Biden's campaign is counting on this issue to drive voters to the polls this November. As for Arizona, the justices putting that ruling on hold for 14 days as a lower court reviews it. David. Rachel Scott leading us off from Washington. Rachel, thank you. We turn now to Michigan where James and Jennifer Crumbly, the first parents ever to be convicted in a child's school mass shooting, tonight now sentenced to 10 to 15 years in prison each. The Michigan couple together for the first time since their arrest after their son's deadly rampage, their son using a gun they bought him as a gift. The father apologizing in court today, but then the families of the four teens who died with their own words for each of those parents. ABC's Trevor Alt from Michigan tonight. Tonight, the historic sentence for James and Jennifer Crumbly, a Michigan judge sending the parents to prison for 10 to 15 years, the maximum sentence for failing to prevent their son's mass shooting. These convictions are not about poor parenting. These convictions confirm repeated acts or lack of acts that could have halted an oncoming runaway train. Despite the warning signs, the Crumblies bought their son the gun, declining to take him home from school when called in about his disturbing drawings the morning of the massacre. The couple today together for the first time since their arrest, making an appeal for leniency. Please know that I am truly very sorry. I am sorry for your loss as a result of what my son did. This could be any parent here in my, up here in my shoes. Ethan could be your child. The families of the four children killed rejecting that argument. It wasn't possible for Hannah to outrun the bullets spot by you, Jennifer Crumley, which were fired by the 9mm stick star that you, James, gifted to your son. Saying Hannah St. Juliana, Justin Schilling, Tate Meir, and Madison Baldwin would all still be alive had the Crumbleys done their job as parents. When you texted Ethan, don't do it. I was texting Madison, I love you, please call mom. The prosecution blasting the Crumbly's chilling lack of accountability. They do nothing and then they come here today and they claim they're victims. The judge saying she decided to sentence the Crumbly's beyond the suggested state guidelines because of the catastrophic impact of their crimes. Each of the defendants gross negligence has caused unimaginable suffering to hundreds of others as a result of what happened that day. David, these trials were watched very closely. They are certainly precedent setting. The first parents held criminally responsible for their child school shooting. And tonight the prosecution says James and Jennifer Crumbly have been held to the highest level of accountability under the law in Michigan. David Trevor Alt, who has covered this case from the start for us. Trevor, thank you. We turn now to the threat of severe storms tonight moving across several states in the south before it then moves east and then right up into the northeast. Tonight, millions are on alert for a multi-day outbreak. Tornado watches in Texas and Louisiana right now. Tomorrow, this threat widens to several states. The threat of strong tornadoes and damaging winds up to 75 miles an hour across to the Florida panhandle, rain and potentially damaging winds, then barreling right up the east coast. Senior meteorologist Rob Marciano is tracking it all for us. He's live in New Orleans tonight for us. Hey, Rob. 
Hey, David, damaging winds, hail, and floods. I think the main threats tonight, we already had an 86-mile-an-hour wind gust in Texas, and we've got watches up from Texas all the way into Georgia. Look at Shreveport. You got clobbered earlier. Bossier, uh, Bossier City, you're next. And then down across Austin, I think storms will reform there. Tomorrow, there's red on the map. Tornadoes possible. Baton Rouge across southern Mississippi. And these storms get going early. This is dynamics and dew point driven. So I think a cluster of damaging storms, including tornadoes, will be right near New Orleans before noontime and then crossing into the panhandle of Florida and into Georgia late in the day. The low itself climbs up through the Mississippi and Ohio River Valleys. It expands as it does so tomorrow night into Thursday. Thursday, rain and wind in the northeast, but the next 36 hours here in the south will be dangerous. David? A switch from the solar eclipse indeed. Rob, thank you for the coverage yesterday and thank you for tonight. We continue with the news here and tonight federal agents say they have prevented what they say was a planned terror attack on multiple churches in Idaho. The FBI arresting an 18-year-old suspect his alleged plans now revealed tonight. Here's our Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas now. Tonight, this teenager is behind bars, accused of hatching a murderous terror plot to attack multiple churches in the lakeside community of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, all in the name of ISIS. Federal agents arresting 18-year-old Alexander Mercurio on Saturday, just hours before they say he intended to attack his father, handcuff him, and steal his dad's guns to target parishioners. Sources telling ABC News, Mercurio's father had dozens of weapons, including an AR-15 assault rifle, locked in a closet. In charges unsealed overnight, more chilling details. The teen allegedly telling one FBI informant, I will start a few fires and chuck the gas can at the fires to cause explosions and structural damage. Then I flee the scene and repeat until I am martyred. Authorities say Mercurio had identified a specific church where he would start his rampage on Sunday, right before the end of Ramadan. According to the FBI, in addition to setting fires using butane fuel, Mercurio also planned to attack parishioners with knives. A plot eerily similar to that recent ISIS attack on the concert hall in Moscow. Mercurio allegedly taking this picture in front of an ISIS flag, armed with a knife. On Saturday, the day before the alleged attack, Mercurio allegedly sent an audio file to an FBI informant, saying in part, I am answering the call from the Islamic State for jihad and to kill. The news coming just days after the FBI and Homeland Security officials warned that ISIS was calling on operatives and so-called lone wolves to conduct attacks in the U.S. like the Moscow massacre. The foreign terrorist threat and the potential for a coordinated attack here in the homeland, like the ISIS-K attack we saw at the Russia concert hall just a couple weeks ago, is now increasingly concerning. The FBI director and attorney general making rare overnight statements. Chris Ray called the alleged Idaho plot truly horrific. The FBI was already worried about the potential of terror because of the Israeli-Hamas war. Now with ISIS showing signs of resurgence, authorities are even more concerned, David. They will remain on alert for sure here in the U.S. Pierre, thank you. We turn now to the horrific images tonight, the newly released police body camera video of a deadly police shooting in Chicago. Graphic images showing a driver pulled over for a seatbelt violation, opening fire and wounding an officer. Police firing back, unleashing 96 shots in 41 seconds. We have a warning here. This is difficult. Here's Alex Perez. Tonight, an independent investigation underway after this traffic stop turned deadly. Chicago police body camera video capturing the incident that ended with officers firing a barrage of bullets, killing 26-year-old Dexter Reed. Police say Reed fired first. Roll the windows down. The ordeal unfolding Roll just after 6 p.m. March 21st. Reed in the driver's seat of his white SUV, surrounded by five plainclothes tactical officers, guns drawn, who initially pulled him over for not wearing a seatbelt and can be heard yelling commands at Reed. In the video, Reed appears to ignore those commands. Open the door now! That's when Reed, investigators say, fired at officers, striking this officer, according to authorities, in the wrist. The officers scatter and immediately return fire, four officers unloading 96 rounds in 41 seconds. During the gunfire, Reed exits the vehicle and falls to the ground and appears to be shot multiple times. Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson today. Shooting a police officer can never be condoned. 
And we also have to be very clear that we hold our police to the highest of standards. Reed, at the time of the incident, was facing charges for allegedly carrying a gun into a street festival. His mother, heartbroken. They killed him! They killed him! They killed him! And David, authorities say a gun was recovered from the front seat of Reed's vehicle. Those officers are now on administrative leave as that independent investigation is conducted. David? Alex Perez reporting from Chicago tonight. Thank you, Alex. In New York City tonight, Donald Trump's last-minute appeal to delay his first criminal trial that is set to start on Monday has been denied tonight by an appeals court judge. So what does this mean? Does the hush money trial now begin next Monday? And what will it look like? Here's our senior investigative correspondent, Aaron Katursky. Tonight, a New York appeals court judge rejecting Donald Trump's last-ditch efforts to delay his first criminal trial, now set to start in just six days. Trump asked for the case involving a hush money payment to porn star Stormy Daniels to be moved out of Manhattan, arguing he can't get a fair shake here because of pre-trial publicity. But prosecutors say Trump's the one who turns every court appearance into a spectacle. And it's a disgrace. Trump also asking to halt the trial, saying the limited gag order leaves him unable to respond to what he called ongoing verbal assaults from Daniels and Michael Cohen, two key witnesses for the prosecution. But today, an appellate judge ruling the trial must go on. So jury selection is set to begin Monday. Prospective jurors will fill out a seven-page questionnaire asking whether they've ever attended a Trump rally, follow him on social media, or belong to an array of extremist groups like Proud Boys, Oath Keepers, or Antifa. Potential jurors will also be asked if they have strong opinions about Trump or firmly held beliefs about whether a former president can be charged with a crime. Trump has tried every which way to delay this historic first criminal trial of a former American president, and he still has a couple of appeals pending. But, David, as of now, jury selection is starting on Monday, and the judge expects Trump to be there. David? You'll be there as well. Aaron Katursky tonight. Aaron, thank you. This evening, Norfolk Southern Railroad has agreed to a $600 million settlement in the fiery derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. The agreement aims to settle all class action claims within a 20 mile radius of the spot where 150 cars derailed, spilling hazardous materials that caught fire. It would also settle any personal injury and health claims within a 10 mile radius. A judge could approve this uh, within weeks. When we come back here tonight, the images coming in at this hour, the fires burning outside New York City, right near Newark Airport. We'll show you the images. Also a helicopter crashing into the water in Rhode Island, the rescue effort. And this question tonight, does Walmart owe you money? In a moment. Tonight, the images coming in at this hour, several wildfires burning right outside New York City. The brush fires in Elizabeth, New Jersey, right along the turnpike near Newark Airport. Authorities say the smoke and flames so far are not affecting airlines taking off. Uh, they warn it could, though, uh, slow down traffic. Tonight, an urgent rescue effort after a helicopter crashed in South Kingstown, Rhode Island. Two people on board, the chopper sinking in Warden's Pond. The pilot and passenger climbing out, treading water. Two people then in a boat racing over and able to pull them to safety. When we come back here tonight, Walmart may owe customers money, but time is running out to claim it. To the index and tonight, Walmart may still owe millions of customers money as part of a $45 million class action settlement. The company has to repay shoppers who were overcharged in recent years for bags of citrus fruit or packages of meat. Customers who kept receipts could receive up to $500. Even without a receipt, you may still get some money back. The deadline to file a claim online is June 5th. Walmart has denied any wrongdoing. When we come back here tonight, the solar eclipse across America. So many of you coming up to us in Burlington, Vermont, and to our teams across the country yesterday. So tonight here, with your help, the top five moments of the eclipse. ABC World News Tonight with David Muir, sponsored by Pacific Life, creating financial security for more than 150 years. Before we go tonight, so many of you left me messages on Instagram. So many of you came up to us in Burlington, up to all of our teams across the country. We experienced this all together, the solar eclipse. So tonight, five of the top moments. The eclipse crossing into the U.S. from Mexico, Del Rio, Texas here. The clouds parting, revealing that last sliver of sun, and then the corona. The eclipse creating that diamond ring effect. 40,000 people at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway awestruck when they saw this. Then the so-called Bailey's beads and their bright blue light radiating in Cleveland after that explosion of light. 
in Burlington, Vermont, where Lindsay and I were, the sunlight swelling behind the moon, creating then that diamond ring of hues, pink and purple. Wow, we were just, look at it, awestruck. And then this, Holton, Maine, the moon casting its shadow on the last stop of the last total eclipse over the U.S. for another 20 years. So we'll see you back here in 20 years, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow night. I'm David Muir. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.